Michigan State. Uh, he's the real deal. The real deal who had grown up playing against Ashton Hagens. Hagens last year came here, had about 20, 25 of his friends and family in the stands. Every time he touched the ball, he was booed by everybody who wasn't a member of the Ashton Hagens family and friends group. He ended up with 23 points. He had five rebounds, dished out a handful of alley-oops to guys like Nick Richards. Tricky dribble there, and Kentucky ended up beating Georgia 69 to 49. They certainly hope to have a different outcome tonight, and there is a great deal of optimism around this Georgia program. Tom Crean, now early in his career, has begun to rebuild the foundation. Edwards, as you mentioned, likely a top pick in the NBA draft, and yet you've got a handful of other top 100 prospects who will serve as sort of the building blocks for the future, and this is a great litmus test game. It really is. Coming off a, a huge win at Memphis, this Georgia program on the upswing, but it's got nine freshmen on this roster, ten newcomers, and one of the big factors in the game is going to be junior big guy Rayshon Hammonds, a lefty who has to have a good game. He's going to have to rebound, defend, and stay out of foul trouble uh, in order to give Georgia the best opportunity to win against a, a really solid and good Kentucky team that can rebound, and they are very physical. Should mention too, over the weekend, Ashton Hagens tweaked his uh, ankle. It was a ankle sprain, lower ankle sprain, and you can see number zero, who last year wore number two, is on the floor. He would do everything possible to play in this game, and he looked really good running around during the shoot around. He was participating in every aspect of it, and Kentucky controls the ball to start. Hagens will be guarded by Anthony Edwards. Georgia starts off in man to man, although the Bulldogs can play and will play some zone in this game. Georgia's going to look to try to pack it in and make this Kentucky team prove it over the top. Hagen's first three is way off the rebound. Crump gets it ahead. The ball deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Georgia. Take a look at the Bulldog lineup. They're going to give up some height in this one. Gresham Jr. is the point guard. He will also be spelled a little bit by a guy that gets more minutes than anybody not named Anthony Edwards. That's Severe Wheeler. We'll see when he gets into the game. Right now Tyrese Maxey, the freshman from Kentucky, guarding Anthony Edwards. And there's the steal by a great defender, Nashton Hagens. Who missed the layup. He's 0 for 2. Contested a little bit by the hustle of Donnell Gresham Jr. Well, Hagens knocked the ball away from Tamani Kamara on that first possession. Edwards first shot, no good. Richards clears. Shouldn't have a hard time on the defensive glass. Maxi corner to Brooks. Down low to EJ Montgomery, who dribbled himself and moved himself into a position to turn it over. Ashton Hagens is so good shooting the gap, knocking that ball away. Just unable to get this to go down. Went off at two feet. That's something he has to finish. They've been very impressed with Kamara again. One of the nine freshmen that are on the Georgia Bulldogs team. Tyree Crump made a great cut to the basket. Didn't get the ball, but Georgia able to get a shot to go down. The question for Georgia is can they force Kentucky to their left? This is a predominantly right-handed driving team. And Georgia wants to make them, if they put it on the deck, make them go left and make a play going left. Got a whistle, foul underneath. Going to call it on Rayshon Hammonds. Hammonds cannot get in foul trouble in this game. Now he did, Rayshon Hammonds did not practice yesterday. He came down with a migraine headache just after practice began, so he wasn't able really to participate. He, was involved in all the scouting and meetings, but uh, but wasn't able to get up and down. Shot from the corner misses. Montgomery, Hagen's three. That looked better on the release, but no good. Loose ball. It's grabbed by Kamara. Cannot jump with Kentucky. You have to turn and box. Tough shot. Uh-oh, Edwards, five to start this one. Contested three, had to hang a little longer, and then he released it and found the net. For most players, that would be considered a bad shot. But that's how good Anthony Edwards is. He can make bad shots. Maxi penetrates good dish. Nick Richards has become a much, much better player this year than he was the prior two. And Kentucky on the board. 
Now, one of the reasons that Maxey was able to make that play was Georgia let him get to his right hand. Got into the lane with the right, able to dish it off to Nick uh, Richards, who is Nick Richards, a junior, is having a terrific year. Tyree Crump too strong, and here's E.J. Montgomery, and you can see the height advantage enjoyed by Kentucky. Height and length. Boy, Higgins has Hammonds on him. He should take him. Isolate and take him. He's trying to clear out. Instead, he'll shoot. That's a two, and that's off. He's cold early. Montgomery, though, with another offensive rebound, and Keon Brooks throws it up and throws it in. All five Georgia Bulldogs have to get to the glass. Tyreek Crump was leaking out early. He's got to stick his nose in there and rebound. Good pass. Kamara. Short, rare offensive rebound. They're going to get a push, though. And the offensive foul. That's called on Danielle Gresham. Mentioned Marty at the top. Here he is. We've seen Anthony Edwards have an extremely successful start to this game. He is the most prized recruit in the history of this program. I spoke with Georgia Bulldogs big man Rayshon Hammonds at shoot around today, and he said Anthony coming here was huge for all of us. There's an obvious difference in the excitement in and around campus. Students are thanking us for winning games. We are changing a culture. We're so young. I try to tell these young guys on this team, you cannot imagine how difficult it was last year, but that makes these wins so much sweeter for us this year. A huge one tonight in Athens. Highest rated prospect. Really good pass from Montgomery to Brooks. Good look from E.J. Montgomery. Well, Georgia is playing some good defense, but they are not finishing plays right now. Ball's loose, and they're not getting it. They're getting a foul on Richards here, Jay, and that'll send Kamara to the line. Dave, thank you very much, and welcome everyone to Georgia. We are on the campus of the University of Georgia Stegman Coliseum just underway. Georgia coming off a historic victory over a number nine ranked Memphis team, and now with a huge litmus test against the Kentucky team that's beginning to find its groove, along with Jay Billis, Carl Ravage, Marty Smith joining us tonight as well. So an early, early test for both of these teams, Kentucky's first true road game of the year. And thus far in the ball game, Georgia's defense, their first shot defense has been pretty good. But Georgia has given second opportunities off offensive rebounds, couple of loose balls, and Kentucky has been able to get a few buckets. And right now, Ravi, what you're seeing, the free throw line, Tamani Kamara is at the free throw line. The free throw line is going to be a big factor in this game. Kentucky shoots 80% from the line. The Wildcats have made 100 more free throws than their opponents thus far this year. They've had 100 more free throw attempts. They've made 138 more free throws than their opponents. That's really remarkable to shoot 80% as a team from the line. Sure is. Georgia not nearly as effective. Kentucky on a 6-0 run. They were down 5-zip. And a nice pass to Nick Richards for the flush from Georgia native Ashton Hagens. Georgia allowed Ashton Hagens to get to his right hand. They did not force him left. He was able to get into the middle, draw the defense, and dump it down to Nick Richards for an easy one. They've got to force him left. How about Hagens with a block there on Crump? They've got numbers five on four. Hagens missed a couple of early shots. Anthony Edwards, the superstar freshman for Georgia, made his first two, including a contested three. That's good defense by Georgia and Rayshon Hammonds, forcing Nick Richards into a tough contested two from about 12 feet. One and done on the other end for Georgia. Tyrese Maxey finds Hagens, who keeps shooting, and he can't knock down that three. Boy, what a rebound by Rayshon Hammonds. Where's Rayshon going? We got a goaltend here. We're going to travel before that. Rayshon Hammonds going to need a hand to get up. He gets it. Just underway in a Super Tuesday. Kentucky 8, Georgia 5. Long crowds, and in fact, all the SEC games are sold out. We'll have over 9,000 for this one, which should be a really fun game. You got two teams that like to move it up the floor, like to shoot. You have two premier guards, and Ashton Hagens, who once committed here, and of course Anthony Edwards, who came out and made a uh, two quick buckets, including a three-pointer. So there's a good atmosphere here tonight. Oh, it's a great atmosphere. I mean, this, uh, this place is lit, and both teams are ready to play. 
it's just a question of paying attention to detail. And especially when you have a young team in Georgia, you know, their game plan is to try to keep uh, Kentucky contained off the dribble. It's obviously difficult to do, but you don't want to let Kentucky's right-hand drivers go to their right, force them to their left. And at times, thus far early in the game, both Tyrese Maxey, Ashton Hagens, they've been allowed to drive right. Now that was a left-handed drive, but still able to make a play. But right here, you got a right-handed drive, draw a defender, you help up, and all of a sudden you're giving up a dunk. If you can make Kentucky, their guards go to their left, you're gonna have a better opportunity to contain this team. You gotta stay in front without fouling. Georgia two field goals made, three turnovers in their first 11 trips. There's a whole bunch of folks on hand to watch Anthony Edwards here tonight. You got 31 different members of 19 NBA teams, including at least one owner of an NBA team here to watch this. Because the place is lit, Marty Smith is here. I mean, Marty is always in places that are lit. <laughs> That's what I do, Ravi. I hear you. Coach Calipari just implored his young men to have better spacing and to attack Anthony Edwards. He felt like they had several opportunities to do that early in this game, and they didn't take advantage of those. So those are the things that he was really discussing in that huddle. Nice run and jump shot there by Tyrese Maxey, also into the game now for Kentucky. Khalil Whitney, number two, and Nate Sestina, good three-point shooter. He wears number one. Also into the game is Severe, who, who gets more minutes than anybody not named Anthony Edwards, a terrific guard for Georgia. You'll see him. He's one of those great freshmen, Severe Wheeler. Well, Anthony Edwards early was able to get a deep three. First, a little step back along the elbow, and then coming down. This is about as deep as you want anybody to shoot the ball but able to knock it down with great pressure he's being guarded by Tyrese Maxey and Maxey has been face guarding him he is not helping off at all he is giving all of his attention to Anthony Edwards similar to what Emmanuel quickly did with Jordan Wara when they played Louisville in Rupp Arena count the bucket for Hammonds and he'll get a foul Emmanuel quickly in the game as well for Kentucky now, Rayshon Hammonds is 6'9 he's a junior and really a playmaker. He's a left-hand driver, but he can rebound, he can play pick and pop. Really he's had a breakthrough this year with his not only productivity, but his consistency. And he's been very good of late. He had a terrific game against Memphis on the road. He had 15 points, 12 rebounds, and three steals. Averaging nearly a double-double. The free throw shooting is something to keep an eye on too in this game. Kentucky gets to the free throw line a ton and they make a lot of free throws. Something historically you don't really associate with the Wildcats, but this year they've been phenomenal. Yeah, Georgia shooting, has not been very good. Shooting 80% as a team, got a switch here. Maxi went to the left and he gets it to go with a left hand. Tough shot. That's two straight drives for Tyrese Maxi. Such an explosive score. At 27 against Louisville, he was magnificent in that game. According to our Marty Smith, Ashton Hagens has gone to the locker room. Not sure for what reason, but he's gone to the locker room. So you got Quickly and Maxie in the backcourt with Montgomery, Richards, and Khalil Whitney in the front court. Wheeler high arcing three. He got hit. That'll lead to three free throws as Emmanuel Quickly fouls him with a push. Thursday, the Pac-12 game of the night, ESPN, the ESPN app. Oregon hosting number 24, Arizona. That's 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Ducks have won three in a row against the Wildcats. And 6 of 8 in the last four years. Great point guards in this one. Pretty good point guards in that one, Jay. Well, Nico Mannion, the freshman point guard for Arizona, is a spectacular talent. And I'm not sure there's a, a better winner in the country than Peyton Pritchard, the senior point guard for Dana Altman and the Oregon Ducks. Nobody's played more minutes over the last four years than Peyton Pritchard. You can't take him out of the game. He's too valuable. Ashton Higgins has come back. He's got what appears to be a wrap around his midsection. He's also tying that left shoe of his. I don't know what that is around his waist. I've never seen that a player wear that during a game. It feels like it's the Brett Favre Jerry Rice commercial where they wear that belt with the copper in it and it makes them feel better. Have you tried that? No, yeah. I've not. I'm not that old. <laughs> well, good job by Wheeler to cut off the baseline on that maxi drive. 
Maxie's bigger, he can see over him. Down low to EJ Montgomery, who kicks back Maxie three. No good. We're going to get a foul underneath. We'll call that on Khalil Whitney with a push from behind. Whitney into the game early. He's a fantastic athlete, a very powerful player. But he's had some difficulty adjusting to the college game. He's going to be really good. But he's one of those players, Ravi, where everybody expects it right now. He's a McDonald's All-American. And just because it takes a little longer doesn't mean it's a bad thing. He's going to be really, really good. He's guarding Edwards right now. Hagen's back into the game. Maxi goes to the bench. A good cut by Wheeler. He really bailed out Jordan Harris there. Hammond's way short on the three. Tough rebound in traffic. And we're going to get a foul called against Christian Brown into the game for Georgia. Brown and Jordan Harris both into the game now for Tom Preen. Georgia has to do a good job of moving the ball and cutting. One thing that Georgia can't do in this game is settle. They can't settle for jumpers, and they can't settle for one side of the floor. And when Georgia has four or more passes in a half-court possession, they shoot 56% from the floor. That's pretty darn good. And when they have less, they shoot poorly? They shoot less than that, yeah, significantly less. Emmanuel quickly has also played Offensive very well. Lately, but yet, there it is. Nick Richards gets called, and Calipari starts screaming at him as Nick raises his arms up like, what did I do? He'll get the answer in about two seconds. Well, he got in a wrestling match with Rayshon Hammonds down low, and then he, he raised up his elbow and was able to push off with it. Now, these two got in a wrestling match. First of all, you got two big guys posting in the same spot. And anytime you, you know, anytime you get your elbow up near the the neck of of the defender you know they're gonna have to look and see if it was a flagrant now i don't think it is i think it's just a common foul but uh you know anytime that happens the referee's always behind you there and they're gonna call that every time that's just a sort of big man post play first of all you can't have two guys posted up in the same spot and that's where emmanuel quickly he's got a he's got to direct some traffic there and and tell one or the other to get out of there Well, maybe they will give him a flagrant one there because that came right across the chin. It looked like incidental contact at first, but they, they may wind up because that was a shot to the, yeah, they're going to give him a, that's going to be a flagrant one. Is Nick Richards, because of the way he's playing, we saw at the end of the Missouri game, he and Jeremiah Tillman get into sort of a push-shove match as well. Yeah. Is he going to garner a lot more attention, though, because of the oh, way sure. he's playing? Yeah, and that, that's the right call. I mean, look, that, that was a, you know, that wasn't made like a, in a basketball play, basketball motion, they would call it. So that's, that's the right call. Boy, at first in live action, it didn't look like it was, uh, it was right across his chin like that. Hit him right in the jaw. Officials tonight, Todd Austin, Byron Jarrett, no one short. Hammonds goes to the free throw line where Georgia is two of six tonight. But one thing that Kentucky's got to do with Rayshon Hammonds is make him guard. And he's he's having such a good year. He's third in the Southeastern Conference in rebounding. And he's scoring at a good clip. He's averaging nine rebounds a game, 14 points. But if you can make him defend, you got a chance to hang some fouls on him. And that's the best way to defend the players, get him out of the game with fouls. You brought up a really good point. Kentucky's used to playing freshmen, and as you said to us earlier today in uh, our conversations, it works for them. What are the folks in Georgia going to have to kind of get used to when you bring in these top 100 players, and there's a heck of a move, and he gets the roll by Jordan Harris. What are they going to have to get used to when you expect them to be superstars right away, and maybe they're not? Well, I mean, you know, look, they're going to have to be patient with this entire program. But look at the dividends that their hard work is paying. I mean, they, they, they are playing really well right now. They got themselves a one-point lead, under 12 to go. The SEC on ESPN. Back to Georgia after this. Georgia Bulldogs got a one-point lead in uh, historically football school. The basketball program is starting to make a name for itself. But... Marty Smith with a special guest. Thank you, Ravi. That's right. I'm here with the head dog, the lead dog, Kirby Smart, head football coach. 
of these Georgia Bulldogs. Let's start with what Coach Crean has done here from a culture perspective with Georgia basketball. How would you describe this? This is phenomenal. This is special. I don't ever remember one like this now. This is special. I've never seen it this crowded and this packed, and it doesn't have as much blue in it. I know you have a, a relationship with Tyree Crump, the great player for Georgia. You guys are from the same hometown. What is that relationship like? Well, it's special. Early in his career, I got to visit with him. I knew his late father really well, and uh, he's been a tremendous asset. He's, he talks to a lot of our football players. He comes by my office and always sees me, and he'll pull it from anywhere in the court. <laughs> when you look at – and you guys are a football school. All right, we all know that. That's just the truth. But when you have a, a guy come in like Tom Crean, they had a tough year last year, and now they're a 10-win team playing one of the best teams in the country with this type of atmosphere. How do the football team and the basketball team work symbiotically to grow the entire athletic program? Well, I think it's the two biggest sports in your athletic program. So when the face of those are doing well, it helps tremendously. What he's been able to do to energize our program and our fan base, putting people in the seats, has really been incredible. That, that win last weekend at Memphis was incredible. Uh, we have a college football playoff national championship next Monday night. Uh, you, you've seen LSU. You know Clemson. Give, give me a scouting report. What should we expect in that game? Won't be a lot of defense like that, I'm afraid. Gonna be some points scored. Uh, two exciting teams. Pushing it down the floor here. Two exciting teams. Can't wait to watch them play. There he is right there. The boy. All right, right on cue, Pro. All right. Bainbridge is finest right there. It looks like we got a timeout now as the Wildcats hope to regroup, Ravi. Bainbridge, Georgia in the house, but how about the block that started that whole thing? Jordan Harris as E.J. Montgomery went up and thought he had himself a dunk. It went the other way quickly. That block was almost as good as Marty saying symbiotically. <laughs> We're back. If you had symbiotically or lit in the pool, you win already. <laughs> Georgia on a 9-0 run. I can't get over the defensive play, which led to that crump three. They go back inside, and so far Keon Brooks has had his way in the paint. In fact, Kentucky has scored all 14 of their points in the paint. That's really the point, is Georgia has got to find a way to keep Kentucky out of the lane. Is not a great perimeter shooting team that John Calipari has, but man, they are good around the rim and they are good on the glass. Brooks needs to, he's going against Crump there. Got away with a flop. Loose ball on the floor, quickly picks it up, and now they get themselves three on one. Higgins and the foul as Crump got him, and Acton Higgins adds two more in the paint and has got a chance for another one. Boy, what a turnaround. Georgia taking the ball down there and pop it up and then wind up giving essentially a four on one to Kentucky. And Tyreek Crump is back and makes the mistake of fouling with really no chance to stop the bucket. Hear the boos for Hagens, who is from Cartersville, Georgia, about an hour and 45 minutes away from here, originally committed to Georgia when Mark Fox was fired. Hagens decommitted. Ended up obviously wearing this Kentucky blue. Tough shot. And a travel. And that was just one side of the floor. You know, Georgia needed to move it to the other side. They got a little, they're running some chin action where they get a little back pick at the foul line and a cut to the basket when they've lifted everything up but they got to move the ball from side to side fifth turnover for the Bulldogs Maxi high floater and way too strong oh good pass Kamara pretty play great look ahead and a great job by Kamara of running the floor and he's really starting to come on as Ed Orgeron would say he coming <laughs> we coming he coming Type of game we expected, 18-17, just under the 10-minute mark. And they're going to get a foul on Jordan Harris. Uh, Jordan Harris with the arm bar. But what a fantastic pass ahead after the miss. Xavier Wheeler, who's the leading assist guy on this team, gets it to Tamani Kamara. 
Kamara, a lefty, catches the ball in stride off that great pass. And Kamara has played so well of late, especially his last three games. He's averaging 11 points, seven rebounds, 15 of 22 from the field over his last three coming into this one. Anthony Edwards back into the game for Georgia. Three from the corner. That's no good from quickly. Boy, good box out there. It was a struggle, but Brown is able to come down with it. Well, he stuck with it. Nice pass. One extra pass turned over. Ty Fagan into the game. He turned it over. Should have just hit it out top to Brown. Great pass. He walked. He did get away with the walk. They call the foul Boy, he and walked. the basket. Yeah, that was a travel. The officials missed that. It's not even close. I, you know, that's... That's a bad miss. I mean, he shuffled his feet. Yeah, take a look here and watch his feet. Pivot foot is his right. Now his left. <laughs> and his right. And his right again. <laughs> but good, good fortune for Kentucky that he stuck with it and wound up getting the foul call. Hey, it's not E.J. Montgomery's fault they missed it. He, he kept playing. That's a that's a big play for Montgomery because he's been struggling the last several games. He had 25 points against Fairley Dickinson, but he's only had 19 points in the five games since then. And coming into the season, I think a lot of you know, the Kentucky staff was hoping that it would be EJ moving toward PJ, that he would have the same kind of sophomore year that PJ Washington did last year. Good drive there by Anthony Edwards. His body looks a little bit like LeBron James did when he was coming out of high school. He is a physical specimen. A Saturday afternoon SEC ACC college hoop doubleheader on ESPN in the app. You'll see Kentucky hosting Alabama. Jay will be at that one. That's noon Eastern, then 13th ranked Louisville. They're in South Bend. They take on Notre Dame. We had Alabama earlier this uh, week, and boy, do they like to launch threes. Nate Oates has been playing a different style of ball than Alabama. Guys, we noted what a coveted recruit Anthony Edwards was here at Georgia. You wonder why did he choose Athens? And it's interesting. Two of his heroes are Dwayne Wade and Victor Oladipo. Who coached Dwayne Wade at Marquette and who co coached Victor Oladipo at Indiana? Tom Crean did. That was a major determining factor on why Edwards chose to come to Athens. Hagens to his left. Oh, what a play by Ashton Hagens in traffic. Kentucky just getting some isolation, spreading the floor, and going off the dribble. That one from the top. The points in the paint are a separating factor in this one. Tough shot from Edwards. And a loose ball picked up by Fagan. Nice layup. Turnover for Kentucky, cost him. Well, you got to be strong with the ball. That looked like a foul as well, but if you're not strong with it, and the referees aren't going to protect you. You got to protect yourself. Here comes a high screen, Sestina, who can play pick and pop. They're just switching that. And if they keep switching it, you can expect Hagen to try to drive it. Keon Brooks off the window, battles for his own rebound. Instead, it's Georgia comes down with it. And Edwards will push. Well, that was a heck of a rebound by John L. Gresham. Fagan, the bucket, and the foul. Give credit to Gresham, the grand transfer from Northeastern. He got a tough rebound in traffic that led to that layup on the other end. That's a big time play. Fagan gets the foul. Fagan gets the bucket. And we got a good one here in Georgia tonight. Welcome back, everyone, to ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Earlier this season, Kentucky scored 54 points in the paint against Eastern Kentucky. They're off to a good start tonight. Well, they've gotten some very good penetration into the lane from both Tyrese Maxey and Ashton Hagens. Gotten a few drop-offs. Keon Brooks has had some good plays. Nick Richards, who has two fouls and hasn't played a ton, minute, a ton of minutes with a finish there, and then getting the ball at times into the post with Keon Brooks going with that left shoulder jump hook. So, so far, Kentucky's game plan of getting the ball into the paint has been solid. 
but Georgia's done a very nice job of not fouling and not letting Kentucky get to the foul line where they really outscore their opponents. Mentioned earlier, Kentucky has made, coming into this game, ha has shot 100 more free throws than their opponents and made 138 more, shooting 80%. That's a remarkable statistic. That's the 11th free throw for Georgia tonight. Kentucky's attempted two. And their sixth free throw made for Georgia. They got themselves a three-point lead, 7-18 to go in the first. Khalil Whitney back into the game. Keon Brooks, who leads the way with six, goes to the bench, having a good game tonight. Nick Richards out as well. Smaller lineup right now for Kentucky, especially without Nick Richards being in there. Emmanuel quickly knocks down the shot off the relocation pass. Terrific job getting it into the lane and then playing it inside out. That's their first non-paint field goal. Quickly shooting about 34% from three. Contested shot, Edwards, that's short. Rebound to Georgia, he'll try again. No good again, and crashing the boards is Maxi. He's got a couple of guys ahead, but he holds it up. Higgins may have gotten away with a walk. You see that called often. Georgia has done such a good job on the defensive glass after a little bit of a slow start Every white shirt is getting down and rebounding and they have done it in a gritty fashion They've been very physical and have sort of met the physical challenge that Kentucky presents on the glass Good pass Rodney Howard gets that ball to Kamara. He is really becoming a very good player for the Bulldogs they Had a mismatch inside with Kamara being covered by a guard off the switch and that was a great job by Georgia to take advantage of it. Last year in this game, they lost by 20 to the Bulldogs. Here with 5.40 to go, they're up by two. Runner by quickly, no good. He hustles for his rebound, throws it back up. That's no good. Max, look, that's Whitney battling. He can't get it. Georgia's got to continue to move. Oh, almost a turnover there. It was out of bounds. All right, take a look at Tyrese Maxey here and Emmanuel Quickly. Maxey's going to be on the left right here, Quickly right there, and Quickly is going to come behind the play and go against the grain on the right-handed drive. So Georgia lets him drive right and a terrific job of moving like right behind here. And Edwards lost him because he was worried about the drive and a wide open shot as a result. That's really good action on the cut against the grain. That happens so often in basketball now when a million years ago back in the 80s, very few people did that. You know who did it best was the Soviet national team. A guy named Remus Kurtonitis went against the grain better than anybody back then. Good defense by E.J. Montgomery and Higgins. All the way to the rack, lays it up with his left, no good. Two Kentucky players had a chance at it and neither come up with it. Out of bounds off Georgia. Yeah, you gave a lot of credit to that last defensive play, but I didn't hear that glee in your voice when I gave you perhaps the best Soviet Union basketball breakdown that you've heard in the last 40 years. It's a fair point, but I was going to revisit it. Good gracious. I was going to ask you to spell his name. When I bring it to that level, <laughs> you got to reward that. This is a high-level game, given some of the words that have been used tonight. And now the reference of the Russian basketball player who ran that particular play better than everybody. Tough catch for Kamara. And Severe Wheeler says, that's on me. Yeah, Severe Wheeler was able to uh, point to himself. But, boy, you got to give credit to Kamara for running the floor because he's putting a lot of pressure on the Kentucky big guys to get down the floor and cover him. That young man is a good player now. He's going to be really good. Tamani Kamara is from Belgium, 6'8 freshman, and that, kid's, that kid can play. Played on the under-16 FIBA European Championship team in 2016. What can you tell so far? Just the fact that Georgia's got a two-point lead against Kentucky coming off that massive win against Memphis. Well, they've defended pretty well according to their game plan. It's been they have not fouled, which has been very smart and disciplined. They've had a hard time keeping forcing Kentucky to the left. They did it with Maxey that time. What a play by Tyrese Maxey. 
I mean, you force him to his left, he's still able to make that play because Hammonds couldn't cut him off along the baseline. Boy, Maxie is so explosive. You saw him in that game against Michigan State, their opener, when he went for 26, and it was almost as if everyone expected, oh, well, he's just going to have 20 a night as Hammonds launches a three and knocks it down. He doesn't look like he has a migraine in this one. Rayshon Hammonds at 26 against Georgia Tech, 21 against SMU. Uh, he has been putting up some really good numbers, especially rebounding. Maybe causing a few headaches. Maxi one more time penetrates. He's on fire right now. Tyrese Maxi give him eight in the game. And he's doing it off the bounce, getting into the lane, not settling for jumpers. Competitive nature of these guys. You wonder with all the talk about Anthony Edwards, if Tyrese Maxey said, wait a minute, I, I'm a high school senior too, playing at the collegiate level right now. Both these kids so young, 18 years young and playing great. Well, Tyrese Maxey, the left-hand drive, took some contact, went to the other side of the rim to avoid the shot block, and Rayshon Hammonds just got scored on. He says, deal with this. A good three-point shooting team? Yeah, it's going to be, that's a good question. It's going to be difficult because it's, uh, it's such a big part of the game. But if you can get into the lane, like Kentucky's been getting into the lane and shoot the, the shoot free throws like they do, I mean, I don't know about you guys, you know, in the studio, but I, I can't remember seeing a stat where you, you've shot 100 more free throws than your opponent, but you've made 138 more. I mean, you know, Kentucky shooting 80% from the line as a team, really, really remarkable to this point in the season. 20% from three-point land tonight. They're one of five. Georgia, three of ten from three-point land. Halftime report coming up with those guys. 2.39 to go here. Rare miss for Maxi and a quick run-up for Wheeler. Challenges quickly, and that ball's deflected out of bounds off Khalil Whitney. Per usual, Cal quite demonstrative in the Kentucky huddle. He told his young men they have to do a better job on switches. They're getting mismatches that they're just not taking advantage of and stop settling for jump shots. Drive the basketball, make Georgia guard you, and draw fouls. Yeah, for the most part, Marty, they've been doing that, of, of trying to get the ball off the bounce. Boy, there's a lot of contact on that drive. Set up Hammonds for a three, no good. Look at Kamara battling. Loose ball, Wheeler picks it up. We're getting a foul on Whitney. Half a step too slow. Uh, Whitney, it might have just been that Xavier Wheeler was just half a step quicker, man. That dude can motor. And he's the, he's the best passer on this Georgia team. He's averaging over five assists a game. He's got a great demeanor out on the court. And he was supposed to go to Texas A&M. He had committed to Texas A&M, but when Billy Kennedy was fired, yeah. his recruiting was opened up. And Billy Kennedy's actually here tonight yeah. uh, scouting for the Brooklyn Nets. But Xavier Wheeler was a terrific get for the University of Georgia. He's a terrific player. Had a dad and uncle work on Wall Street, did Wheeler, and someday he wants to work in pro basketball as a general manager. Why well, stop there? Just be an owner. Be an owner. I hear you. Especially with that Wall Street background. Oh, a nice job staying in front of Ashton Hagens. Wheeler did a good job moving his feet. Right, that's another foul for Hammonds, and he—that was a cheap one. He shouldn't have picked that up. Switched off, and that's his second foul. They're probably gonna have to get him out of there so he didn't pick up a third before halftime. That's gonna send quickly to the free throw line. One of the reasons they're so good at the free throw line. Is this guy right here, Emmanuel? Quickly, he is shooting 95 percent. Never misses, and he closes his eyes before he takes a foul shot. He started doing this against Louisville. He's only missed two free, and then he misses. Talk about he's automatic. He Never misses. misses. This is a remarkable stat. The the free throw advantage that Kentucky gives itself, not just getting there but knocking free throws down when they get there. Khalil Whitney stays on the floor. Calipari told us earlier today, I gotta get production from Brooks and Whitney 
If we're going to really go deep, we need those two guys to really start to play a little bit better and be more productive. Well, Calipari doesn't mince words. He, was t he says to his team all the time, look, you don't have to make them all, but you can't miss them all. About that pass and the flush, you go from Harris to Brown, and this place is on its feet, up by five. Tom Crane has to be delighted with the intensity George is showing. Here's a steal and a two-on-one. Brown lays it in. He gets fouled. What a sequence for Georgia. Jordan Harris on the offensive end in a little bit of trouble, and Brown bails him out. What can Brown do for you? <laughs> Dunk over you. And then Wheeler does a great job on the other end of forcing a difficult drive, and Georgia right there to sit on that drive and knock the ball away. Brown knocking it away, very alert, and then keeps his eyes up and finishes the play. Those are big time plays by Christian Brown. Freshman guard, 6'6", out of Hopkins, South Carolina, and a seven point lead, largest of the night for the Bulldogs. And right now, this is an important sequence for Kentucky. Can they get a score or two and a stop? Or can Georgia move this lead out a little bit more? To win on the road, this is where you got to be tough and get the shot you want. E.J. Montgomery, no good. And a rebound to Georgia. There's still time for Kentucky to get another one. So Georgia's going to use the clock. They can take it all the way down and still have time, plenty of time for an offensive rebound. Georgia's bench has been outstanding. They've outscored Kentucky's 15 to 3. Little horn set, and they're running it high. Great cut. Boy, have they sky today. And another dunk. That was Anthony Edwards. And the lead grows with five seconds to go. Caught Kentucky watching the ball. Hagan's a little silencer here, and that will end the half. But Georgia puts on a show in front of nearly 9,500 fans. And they are feeling really good right now. Anthony Edwards showing that shirt off. Well, they feel good. There's 20 minutes to go in this one. A, very, a gritty first half, but there's 20 more to go. Send it to Marty. Thanks, Ravi. Coach, how would you assess that first half performance? Uh, up and down, but we're playing hard. we got to get the points in the paint taken care of. A uh, few times when we've switched, we haven't gotten behind, or we haven't gotten in front, I mean, and we've got to do a better job there. we just got to keep getting ball pressure on them. we got to keep running on them, and the whole thing's going to come down to how we rebound. A big run there at the end of the first half. You have such a young team. How would you assess how they're managing this atmosphere? Oh, they did a great job. I mean, to make plays like that on the attack, broken plays, attacking the rim, that's what we got to do. That's what Kentucky's doing. That's what we have to do. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Appreciate your time. Ravi? Thank you, Marty. Got loud. Georgia 6-0 and this year. We're leading at the half, and we have seen a number of buckets go through above the rim. We count three dunks. It feels like 33. Halftime report with Kevin Nagandi, Seth Greenberg, LaFonso Ellis following a short commercial break. Super Tuesday presented by Progressive along with Jay Billis and Carl Ravage. Both teams back on the floor as the SEC on ESPN gets set for the second half of this one. Last year here at Stegman, Kentucky a 20-point winner. They're trailing by six right now as we get set to start the second half. There was a shot made at the end of the first half, though, Jay, that probably, probably helped a little bit with what Kentucky was dealing with at the half. This is a huge shot by Ashton Hagens. A great play by Georgia to get a dunk to go up nine, and then Hagens able to get it down, make it a two-possession game. That was a gigantic shot. But a, a terrific job overall by Georgia in the first half. They out-rebounded Kentucky by seven. Yep. Uh, they kept them off the foul line. Kentucky only shot three free throws in the first half to Georgia's 14. But remember also, Nick Richards didn't play much in that first half. Yep. And Richards picked up two fouls, only played seven minutes and change. 
So in the second half, Nick Richards has to be a factor for Kentucky. He's got to be on the glass. He's got to score inside. He's got to be the force that he has been, especially over the last few games. He had only four points. You see the points in the paint. Kentucky over Georgia there. The bench scoring was a big story as well. Only three free throws for Kentucky. And again, as Jay said, the Georgia rebound margin by seven. Anthony Edwards leads the way with eight. Rayshon Hammond, seven, the top scorers for Georgia. Eight points a piece for Hagens and Maxey for Kentucky. Georgia right now, they want to pull Sestina and Richards away from the basket, keep them away from the rim so they can make them one-on-one -on -one defenders on the perimeter. Hey, Sestina played 358 and did not take a shot. He just picked up a foul. Marty? Jay noted how often that Georgia was able to get to the free throw line in the first half. That drove Coach Calipari crazy. I chatted with him as he exited the locker room, and he told me we have to keep them off the line. We have to fight, we have to attack, and we have to be more disciplined if we want to win this game in this environment. That's a great point, Marty, because the, the words that John Calipari has chosen for his team over the last month or so have been fight and finish. And especially, this is the first true road game yeah. for Kentucky and for some of the younger players. You know, they haven't been in an environment quite like this, but there are a number of sophomores. Nick Richards is a junior. Nate Sestina, a grad transfer from Bucknell. They played in difficult environments. Well, 12 seconds in, they immediately sent Georgia to the free throw line. And the lead grows to eight. Sestina down low, working hard, and the little jump hook misses. A good job, even though that Rebound was down on the floor. Tyree Crump, who had leaked out in the first half and didn't go in and rebound, stuck his nose in there to grab that board. They're going to call that off Gresham. He was being guarded tightly by Ashton Hagen's eighth turnover for Georgia. Just a great play by Hagen's. He is such a good defender. The two best point guard defenders in the country are Trey Jones of Duke and Ashton Hagen's of Kentucky. And no, uh, no surprise that they're two of the best point guards overall. I, I put Ashton Higgins right in the top five among point guards. Nationally, he's just really a good player. Lays it up and lays it in. Struggled to start this game, of course, coming off that ankle sprain. Crump three, too strong. Maxi battles for it, he gets it. Maxi is bigger than people think, and he's really explosive. Nick Richards working the glass, can't get it to go. Loose ball picked up again by Richards. And that ball will stay with Kentucky out on Rayshon Hammonds. Richards had two opportunities to finish there, wasn't able to do it. And sometimes when you sit that long, it's hard to establish a rhythm. Grabbed a big rebound, just didn't finish it. Six double-doubles on the season already for Nick Richards. A floppy set where Tyrese Maxey can go off of screens on the block. Foul on Edwards. All day yesterday in practice, Georgia worked on verticality. Going up straight, and then watch the right arm. It comes down, and he looked like he got all ball, but when the arm comes down on a shot block opportunity, the referees are going to call fouls more often than not. Maxie makes the first. Remind everybody, tomorrow night, huge NBA Wednesday double dip. 7.30 Eastern, Luka and the Mavs host Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. The Nuggets then the Chase Center for Giannis and the Bucks as they go against D'Angelo Russell and the Warriors. Our coverage starts with Stephen A's pregame Sports Center at 7. That's on ESPN and the ESPN app. How about Nikola Jokic the other night? Ooh. Joker had 47 points. And I'm not sure, is there a better passing big guy? No since our Vetus Sabonis. <laughs> He's not my Vetus or your Vetus. He is He's our Vetus. You know who's in the building tonight beyond all the NBA scouts? The Woj. Yeah, Adrian Wojnarowski. Did you read the article he wrote on David Stern? Fantastic. It was a masterpiece. <laughs> Sestina's got a good shot from three, and he knocks it down, and it's a one-point lead. I think that's the first three that Sestina's hit in the game since the Ohio State game, where he hit five. He had 17 points in that game, and pick and pop, he's really dangerous. Georgia just spent too much time with the ball and not enough with him on the switch. Edwards 
Boy, there is no place on the floor over half court. He won't shoot. Well, they ran that little chin action. He just came from behind, and that looked like some of the shots he hit in Maui against Michigan State, where he had a second half that was just spectacular. If I remember right, he had 33 points in the second half alone against the Spartans. Of his 37. Quickly, wide open. Nice job by Nick Richards there, too, to help him clear the lane. Uh, shielded away a shot block opportunity, but Georgia cannot allow this Kentucky team to get to their right hand. They're just too good off the dribble. Right, you go underneath on Edwards, and he's going to pull up and shoot it, and he's got a good stroke. But Edwards defensively just like quickly get to that right hand far too easily. And that's really the next step for Edwards. He, he can be a great defender, not a good one, but a great one. Great matchup here. Hagens and Edwards who battled all through their childhood playing basketball against each other. Look out, Edwards buries another three right in front of his bench. He's heating up. Got the switch with Sestina on him. Step back and nailed it. He's got 14. Richards double team quickly, and they're going to get a foul. Yeah, didn't need to go for the steal there. Kamara just needed to come over and have good position. But mm. Sestina on the switch got put in the popcorn machine. <laughs> and Edwards with a little step back went straight up and shot the ball on the way up. You know, when a scorer like, there aren't many scorers like Anthony Edwards, but when, when a scorer gets hot, Man, there's no telling how many he can put in. Good look to Nick Richards, who came down and still able to dunk it as he kept his hands high. He's got six. Every drive that Kentucky gets to the rim, they are subject to throwing that ball up to Richards for a lob. Edwards threw that ball away. He looks at Kamara and said, why'd you vacate? Wayne Wade, Victor Oladipo, played for Tom Crean. Anthony Edwards says, came in not highly touted. They came out really good. Edwards is really good. We'll go 90 feet with Nick Richards when we come back. 94. It was 94 feet with Kentucky's Nick Richards. Now, you grew up in Jamaica. What's the most interesting thing people need to know about Jamaica? Uh, probably the best beaches in the world, to be honest. And what's your favorite thing to eat from your homeland? Uh, jerk chicken and rice and peas. What sports did you play growing up? Cricket, soccer, what we call it, football in Jamaica, uh, volleyball, track and field, so basically everything but basketball. And what was your best sport outside of basketball? Track and field. Now, your girlfriend, Leah Edmond, is one of the most decorated volleyball mm -hmm. players in history. Uh, what's it like? Who's the better athlete first? <laughs> You should have said her. And she told me to ask you this. How long does it take you to dust off all her trophies at home? <laughs> what a nice, I don't, he's not a kid, he's a man. A right. nice young man, Nick Richards is. And we had some fun with him. I mean, Deb Moore, one of the SIDs for great SIDs at Kentucky, uh, was helping me out with ways we could have some fun. And Nick couldn't have been more accommodating. And, and what a great sport and what a great, great young man. So the trophies are Leah's. Leah's an incredibly decorated, successful, great, great volleyball player. She's one of the, not the best in the country, best in the world. I mean, she's a spectacular volleyball player. After the timeout, quickly, Maxie and Hagen's on the floor. They're going to get a foul. Offensive and they're foul. Oh, Nick goodness. Richards. He put that left arm up to try to create some space. That's the second offensive foul. He's got just trying to wrestle for position. And sometimes, man, when you are fighting in the post, it's almost like uh, like you feel like you're getting picked on a little bit. There's not much there. That's just that's just good hard post play. But, you know, look, the officials have been instructed to clean that up. It's just they haven't been doing it most of the year. They're doing it tonight. Rough night for Richards. He's on the bench with three. They're going to get E.J. Montgomery as Rayshon Hammonds just lowered his shoulder and went right into it. Nick ready to come right back in. It's sort of been the way the season early has gone. 
College basketball high ranked teams falling to lower ranked teams. Ohio State, Virginia loses tonight 60 to 53. Penn State beaten, and uh, obviously Kentucky losing here. Villanova also losing tonight in the Big East. Well, I believe all those are on the road, which is, is not a, uh, a great surprise. I mean, you know, Virginia losing at Boston College, I think that would raise a lot of eyebrows, yep. but Virginia is nowhere near the team this year they were last year. They can't score, they can still guard. But Ohio State, they're they're one and three in the Big Ten right now. And a high-ranked team. Which team is the same or better than last year? I mean, there are a number of teams that are better than last year, but uh, but overall, if you took the top five, top ten teams this year and put them against the top ten teams last year, I don't think any of them would win. Right. You know, maybe the maybe last year's you know tenth team could beat uh, or last year's number one team could beat this year's tenth team, but. But last year's teams were just better to this point in the season. Rashawn Hammonds with Sistine on him. That looked like a foul, no call. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. In the corner, Kamara. No good. Look at Edwards battling with the left, no good. And Sistina in traffic with a big rebound. He can do that, but that one is way off. Yeah, that one was a, a trail three, and he's a much better catch and shoot guy. One thing that Georgia doesn't want to do is give up transition buckets, just like they did. I mean, Kentucky is a, a, a good transition team. They get about 32% of their points in transition. And that's the easiest way for the Wildcats to score that and offensive glass and free throws. And, you know what? Any time you take a bad shot, and I'm not saying it was a bad shot, but maybe an ill-advised one yeah. on the last possession, a bad shot's the first pass in your opponent's fast break. What a good pass from Higgins and a great catch by Nick Richards there to pull him within one. Yeah, they called goaltending. Went in anyway. Yeah. Good pass. Good pass there from Edwards and a flush. No foul call. to give the bucket to Jordan Harris. Well, Jordan Harris is an athlete, man. He had a, a great play along the baseline against Memphis where he went to the other side of the bucket. And he's had a couple of super athletic plays in this game on both ends of the floor. Got a switch. Richards has severe Wheeler on him. Quickly threw it up, follows it, keeps it alive. Well, this is the way the game started out with Kentucky getting to some loose balls and offensive rebounds. And Georgia's going to have to continue to do what they did the latter part of the first half, which is get all five guys on the defensive glass. I mean, really, there are two parts of the possession. There's the, the defensive part. When the shot goes up, then the fight begins. How about that strength? There's an offensive foul. He just got away with it. Anthony Edwards continues to pile points up 16 on the night and a big smile on his face he always seems to have a smile on his face like Kentucky was there on him in good position and Kentucky gets the offensive foul but didn't get the call on the other end now watch Edwards here guarded by Maxie who's big and strong Maxie's in good position and he took a you know a forearm right in the shoulder you know, right in the chest and that is one strong guy in Anthony Edwards that's got great body balance. It is really hard to knock him off balance. And boy, he gives you a shot and you go flying. 6'5, 225. Yeah, Maxie's a strong player. Edwards elevates too strong. Good early post by Richards. He needs to get the ball. Maxi left his feet, threw the ball down, no travel call. Referee saying he kept the toenail down. With the left, tough shot, Tyrese Maxi. Well, he's got a lot of game, doesn't he? He can shoot it, and he is so good off the dribble. I know Georgia wants to force him to his right hand, but even going to his left, he is formidable. He's got 12. The Maxie Edwards battle one on one that has been terrific. Got a switch, Sestina on Wheeler. Ball stolen there by Quickly. Wait, Georgia has been loose with the ball in this second half. Tenth turnover of the game. Well, Maxie twice now. 
once didn't leave his feet, but he almost did. That time he did. How about Wheeler picking the pocket of Nick Richards? Richards didn't go right away, which he should have. And what a play by Hagens to knock it away. Quickly lays it in. Boy, that is quite a turnaround for Kentucky. Hagens coming from behind to back tip that ball away. When Richards got the ball in the post, he didn't make a quick move, and Wheeler took it away from him. It looked like Georgia was going to get something easy. Instead, it was a complete reversal. Great shot again, and what a night Jordan Harris is having. Boy, he had an arm wrapped around him, and then Richards coming over from the weak side to try to wipe it away and still got it off the glass and in. Harris has eight. He averages about six and a half. Sestina, great position and a mismatch. She misses the first, misses the second, but Nick Richards taps it up and in. Well, you got to get a body on Richards. Everybody decided they wanted to jump, and Richards made him pay for it. That's the a, a value of having Richards on the floor. And Calipari took, after he got that third foul, he took him out and put him right back in. He's a junior. He can play with fouls. Wheeler. And he's going to get fouled. Looks like it'll be on Higgins. One thing when you are playing Kentucky, you have to know where Ashton Higgins is all the time. Great steal by Sabir Wheeler. Taking it down, he puts it in his other hand, and Higgins takes it away from him and turns defense into offense. And nobody puts a body on Nick Richards, able to tip it in. Who's dusting his trophies? <laughs> Young is in the house to tune in Wednesday, 6.30 Eastern ESPNU, the Wooden Award Midseason Top 25 Special. It's presented by Wendy's. Men's preseason list of 50 cut in half, and the women's top 30 trimmed to 25. That's Wednesday, 6.30 Eastern on ESPNU. That's Trey Young, and that's Quavo. You know that Quavo just, uh, his new song, Practice Makes Perfect, just dropped. It was actually leaked. It shouldn't have been, shouldn't have been leaked, but it leaked a couple days ago. There's leakers. Hate it when that happens. Are you familiar with uh, Quavo's work beyond that song? Practice more more so, more so Jeezy's work, but right. Quavo and I have the same dentist. Is that right? Yes. Have you not seen his smile? It's spectacular. Is it? Big smile, too, on Anthony Edwards most of the time. He's on the bench right now. His team's up three. Getting him a breather with 10.40 to go in what's been a very, very exciting basketball game in front of a packed house here on the campus of Georgia. Coming off a huge win over Memphis. It was their first win on the road against the top 10 team in forever. Boy, John Calipari getting on Keon Brooks. He had an opportunity to get the ball into Nate Sestina in the post and was late and wound up making a pass at a bad angle got bailed out with a foul uh, kentucky looking to get the ball inside if they can to sestina if they get a mismatch Higgins, that ball is taken away and again tremendous effort here on the floor and the battle for it and possession arrow favors kentucky how about the quick hands of jordan harris yeah, Kentucky's going to get the ball because Christian Brown was had his foot out of bounds while he was touching the basketball. And if you're, it's just the rule. If you're out of bounds and you touch the ball, even though even though it looked like it was a tie-up first. Now watch Harris number three going after the ball. Great job by he and Sestina. When his foot goes out of bounds, he's touching the ball, and that's that's out of bounds to Kentucky. Possession arrow will not change. It will stay with Kentucky. Seven on the shot clock on the inbounds. That's a foul. Yeah, good job by Maxi to put the ball on the deck. He's such a hard driver. John Anderson, Zubin Mahente. They will follow our game with Sports Center. A good look at Anthony Edwards' path to Georgia and soon the NBA. Plenty of college hoop ranked teams in action. A lot of them losing. Rachel Nichols sits down with Luka Doncic at Sports Center after college hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app.
was a great feature on Edwards on Sports Center at six. That was fantastic, wasn't it? It was. They talked about too how both his mother and grandmother both passed away from cancer in the same year. They both passed away on the fifth of the month, and that's why Anthony Edwards wears number five on his uniform. Right now, the offense has slowed down a little bit for Georgia. It's on one side of the floor. They're not getting as quick a cuts as they were getting in the first half and putting pressure on the defense. Fagan, good look, and a dunk. More Jordan Harris highlights tonight. Well, give credit to Jordan Harris for cutting to the basket and making himself available to Fagan. That was a terrific cut. A little more than halfway through, Georgia up by five and a pickoff. And they turned it right over. It's happened about three times tonight. Maxi, dagger three. And it's always been Hagens that has turned a bad situation for Kentucky into a good one. Wheeler steps through, throws it up off the window, and it goes. Doesn't Xavier Wheeler know he's too small to do that? What a play. When you are good enough, you are big enough, and that guy is good enough. Maxie lost the ball. Good deflection there. The defensive play by Rodney Howard. It looked like he got hit. That looked like a foul to me. Quickly pushes. He's got numbers. Sustina and the foul. Good touch pass from Tyrese Maxey. Well, what a strong take by Sestina. Went up with both hands, and he is a big, strong man. Really a pretty touch pass by Maxey. And that's just awfully difficult for Ty Fagan to be able to go up and try to block that with his left hand. You want to try to get your body in between. Nate Sestina playing the role of last year's Reed Travis. Grad transfer, big, strong kid. This is the free throw. Travis playing professional basketball overseas. Rayshon Hammonds hasn't touched the ball in a while. He needs to be more active. Using it as a screener where he can pick and pop, roll down to the bucket. Wheeler, not wow. known for his three-point shooting, and we saw evidence of why. Quickly, open three, knocks it down. Kentucky is on top by one. Emmanuel quickly has been playing so well of late. Last two games, 20 points a game, 6 of 14 from three. And he caught that ready to shoot. Got a low release on that shot, but you give him some time and space, and that was nothing but net for Emmanuel quickly. First lead since 21-19 for Kentucky. You're looking at conferences as the Big East, top to bottom, the best, the most competitive. I think the Big Ten is the best, but the Big East is right there. You know, the Big East has so many good teams. There's not a bad team in the league. Uh, and, man, the guards in the Big East are terrific. But boy, it has been terrific in the second half. has been Kentucky. Their offense has reached a, a different level. They're shooting close to 58% in the second half. You're right, though. You read the mind of uh, Tom Crean. Like, let's get Rayshon Hammonds a little more active. He missed two there. Maxie, low by, and the bucket, what a shot, and what a play from Tyrese Maxie. What a drive. Forced to his left, he winds up getting to that right hand on the other side of the basket. Ooh. Now, some people will call that an up and under. It's not. It's just a double clutch and a great play. A fantastic drive and finish by Tyrese Maxie and Kentucky starting to exert themselves.
Young Tyrese Maxey, obviously very coachable in the huddle right before that and one. Coach Calipari implored his young men, go to the rim, attack the rim, don't settle for jump shots. And then he looked around at all of his young men and said, we're on the road for the first time this year in the Southeastern Conference. There's eight minutes to go. Look at this atmosphere. Gentlemen, it doesn't get any better than this. It's been great all night. So is Maxie. Nine of the 17 have come in the second half. Kentucky on a 7-0 run. They've made their last five. Georgia 0 for their last four. And Kentucky all year long has been working with Tyrese Maxey to be decisive with the ball. When he catches it, catch it ready to shoot. And he's got a ton of game. 17 points in this one. So that game he had against Louisville, he had 27 points. Both he and Emmanuel quickly, quickly guarded Jordan Mora and did a spectacular job. And then turned around against Missouri. Emmanuel quickly did at 23 in that one. Yeah. Quickly's got 51 his last three. Hammond shot no good. Georgia's gone cold here. 0 for their last five. And it's one and out. Montgomery, Richards, and the foul. All Wildcats right now. Right now, Georgia not getting back on defense. After the shot by Hammonds, when Georgia didn't get the rebound, they didn't bust it back. And as a result, Nick Richards ran right down Main Street to the rim and got the and one. Kentucky very good in the fast break. We saw a couple of touch passes there, E.J. Montgomery. We saw Tyrese Maxey as well earlier. Big difference for Kentucky when Nick Richards is on the floor. Only played seven minutes in the first half because he picked up two fouls, one of which was an offensive foul in the post. But they're, they're a different team when he's on the floor. He can protect the rim, rebound, and a threat to score and runs the floor like that. That's pretty difficult to contain. Their largest lead of the night, six. Waiting for Edwards to get on track. He's double teamed. Someone's open. Nice Good play. ball fake. Pretty play. Boy, Jordan Harris now in double digits. Yeah, he has made some really impressive plays in this game. The you know, average is about six points a game at nine against SMU. But he's been big time in this one. Got a switch. Spread it out, let Maxi go against Kamara. Tough shots, he hangs and he can't get it. And Crump runs out, he's got Edwards with him. Takes it himself and lays it up and in to cut the lead to two. Ravi, that was spectacular defense by Tumani Kamara. Stuck on a switch, just spectacular. Crowd screams for another stop on defense. At the switch again, now Edwards on Richards inside. Bad pass. Good defense. Ashton Hagens, as you said, as good as anyone in the country. Hagens did it again. I mean, how many times has he taken a bad situation? Now watch this defense by Kamara, staying in front, moving his feet, and then staying vertical and forcing a really difficult two by Tyrese Maxey. That is a spectacular job defensively by the freshman from Belgium. He didn't waffle at all there. Get it? I get it, Belgian get it. waffle. I'm with you. Get it? And I love a good waffle. I'll tell you, I have had some You've been international the... flavor in this one. <laughs> You've been on your game. Here comes a little horn set. The screen's up top. Crump, good three-point shooter, no good. Battle by Kamara, but it's Kentucky that comes away with it. I'd go into Sestina now. He's got a matchup that he could take advantage of low. It's quickly. Maxi floater on the baseline, no good. Rebound Sestina. Richards kept it alive. Maxi blocked that time by Kamara. 
kept it alive. What an effort by Maxi to keep it alive. Contact on Hagens. Do they call the charge? They call the block. They call a block. No basket. They're going to call it on the floor, so no basket. Well, it's the right call. I just didn't think blocks were allowed in college basketball anymore, but it, that was absolutely the right call. But boy, Kentucky going after loose balls, keeping it alive. Nick Richards keeping it alive. What a game. Higgins misses the free throw in a 101 63 61. You know, Ravi, who can figure this game out? Kentucky comes into this dominating from the free throw line against every opponent, and they are missing all their free throws yeah. tonight. Four of 11. I mean, who would have figured that? 80% on the season, 4 of 11. Tough fadeaway, no good, in and out. Sestina had it, and it's out of bounds. They're going to call that off of Gresham, who crashed the boards. One thing for Anthony Edwards, like he can shoot it. He's proven that. But with that body and athleticism, he's got to get to the foul line more and drive it more. And he's settling right now for jumpers. And he's not putting the defense in a bad spot. Boy, every time Kamara's been mm -hmm. switched off on a smaller player, he stayed in front. Quickly. Three is Nylon. Well, how about that pass by Nate Sestina? Got the double team in the post when Sabir Wheeler had to switch off on him. Georgia came to double, and he looked over that left shoulder and found Emmanuel quickly. That was beautiful. Quickly Just beautiful. Scoring average, Jay has gone up about seven points this year from last year. Edwards will fire from way outside. Richards crashes. They're going to get the foul on Kamara. And Anthony Edwards has gone cold here in the second half. Nate Sestina transferred in from Bucknell as a grad transfer, but this is an Ivy League pass. Terrific pass before the double could get to him, and Emmanuel quickly knocks it down. Eyes open on that one. High IQ. Exactly. Emmanuel quickly. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Thursday, Pac-12 game of the night, ESPN, the ESPN at number nine, Oregon, hosting number 24, Arizona, nine Eastern, six Pacific. The Oregon Ducks have won three in a row against the Cats, six of eight in the last four years. That's Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So Georgia's going to need another push in the last 325 because Kentucky... They have played really hard in this second half, diving on the floor, going after loose balls, and as good as Ashton Hagens has been with his defense and four steals and making things happen, Nick Richards in the second half, Nate Sestina, who's been better than Tyrese Maxey? He's been awesome. Yep. 17 points, six rebounds, seven assists, and three steals. And this guy has been a big presence in the second half. No doubt about it. Nick Richards after his 14th point. Too strong. And that ball will go out of bounds off of Jordan Harris. Georgia off that win against the top 10 team. Memphis has won four in a row. Remember, they lost 21 games last year. They were 2-16 and 16 in the SEC. Ball screen up top by Richards now going for round one. He's got Gresham guarding him, essentially a point guard. Hagan's got bumped. He bounces it to Richards. It's on the floor with two seconds to go on the shot clock. Nick threw it up, couldn't get it. That's a big stop for Georgia. Down by five with three minutes to go. I think Georgia's got to get to the rim here. Well, you know they can get a jump shot when they want, but get to the rim. Edwards posting up, quickly guarding him. Kamara baseline, he got pushed by Nate Sestina. And that'll send Georgia to the free throw line. Kamara's just a 60% free throw shooter. 
He has got a big upside. So athletic and talented. He makes good decisions out there. But Kamara's defense on switches moves his feet, stays in front, stayed vertical. You know, most most young, young bigger guys, especially, you put them in that situation, they foul, and he doesn't. That's a big free throw after missing his first two tonight. This one can cut it to a one possession game. And then it's on the defense of Georgia to get a stop. They're really hanging in there. How about the rebound battle? We thought that would be decidedly in Kentucky's favor. Their edge is just two overall, 36-34. Georgia's done a great job on the boards. Well, Georgia's put themselves in a position here to have a chance to win the game. But you got to give a like. Kentucky's been great in the second half. There's a switch again. Gresham back on Richards. He's got to get the ball. Nate Sestina, good ball fake there. Freed himself up for a 15-footer. This is a good lineup for Kentucky to have Sestina as a stretch four. And then you've got those three explosive guards with Higgins, Maxey, and Quickly. This, uh, this has to be the best lineup that John Calipari has. I like it a lot. Severe Wheeler alley-oop. That's Edwards. He got fouled. He went to the free throw line. Smart play to get the ball inside and get something in the paint instead of settling for jump shots because that that's a lot of what Anthony Edwards has done in this second half. He got hot, but he took some less than desirable jumpers I would say in the second half where he's he can do better Edwards makes that free throw you'll learn much more about Anthony Edwards how he ended up at Georgia and what his prospects are in the NBA that's on Sports Center. John Anderson Zubin Mahente a couple of minutes away from now the ranked teams that went down tonight Rachel Nichols will sit down with Luka Doncic from Sports Center again follows after college basketball. That was a terrific piece by Mark Spears and the undefeated on Anthony Edwards. What a terrific young man Edwards is and a great teammate. Boy, I thought Sestina was going to pull the trigger on that one. Maxie saw an opening. They lob to Nick Richards and he throws it down. Anytime Kentucky is able to penetrate there if you help up and don't stay connected they are throwing it right to the rim for Richards to dunk it in there they've done that for the last 10 years yeah. under John Calipari and it's easy to say it's easy to talk about how you stop it but right down Main Street just that move by Hammonds to help up and then it's right at the rim for an easy one all right, JB, take a look now at our Capital One rewarding performance. You can certainly make the case the way Nick Richards has played in the second half, but overall, the entire game, it's been this guy. Well, it, one guy that has not settled for jumpers is Tyrese Maxey. I mean, 17 points, just some courageous drives and finishes. Look at that, how he looks away and able to get in that floater. Another runner in the lane, going to his left, back to his right. 17 points, six rebounds, seven assists, and three steals. Big numbers. That's a complete game. And he's not even breathing hard. Big numbers. And look where Nick Richards has climbed to. He has missed only three of his 10 field goal attempts, 15 points. That is the lineup that you seem to like the best, those guys that are on that graphic. Yeah, this is a terrific lineup out there from ability to score and what a finish. My goodness. That's why he needs to get down and get to the rim. You put him in the post, he can overpower you. Edwards has 20. The lead is four. A buck 15 to go. 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Higgins all the way to the rack on a foul is called. It's just too easy. You know, they're able to turn the corner. First it was Maxi, then Hagens, and they're getting all the way to the rim, right down the middle. And to your point, you have three point guards on the floor here, in Quickly, in Hagens, and Maxi. All three can handle the ball, and they've all managed to find their way into the lane. Well, Ashton Hagens, who had that twisted ankle against Missouri, he's already gone to a shoe change. 
He wore a different pair of shoes in the first half. Looked like he got hit on the knee on that last one. Because he was having a hard time. He's looks like he sort of stiffened up. Disappointing night for Rayshon Hammonds, who fouls out. Two of nine from the floor. He had nine points. But he's done for the evening as Higgins gets that one to go. There's still plenty of time. You don't have to settle for a three here. Edwards, that off his knee. Him. It is off his knee. And who created that turnover? Ashton Higgins reached it again. He is just a spectacular defender. I mean, his will is really incredible out there as a defender. Knocks the ball off, and it went right off the leg. I mean, the officials have to go look at it because he got a review in the last two minutes, but they're, they're, they have the call exactly right. It was right off of, of Edwards. One thing about these replays, it's done. The SEC does a great job with replays. This was the Hagen's ankle injury over the weekend against Missouri. You can see him grabbing that left ankle. There was a fear amongst everyone. It appeared but Hagen's who told me today, I knew right away that I had twisted or turned or sprained my ankle. The fear was an Achilles. It's because we've seen so many people sort of unprovoked grab that area, and that's what it is. Yeah, it was not contact, right. so that, that was the initial fear. I think everybody had that feeling because, you know, you, when you see a, oftentimes in basketball, ankle injuries come from stepping on a player's foot. Yep. And, and you know, you roll it over or something. It's usually really obvious. That one wasn't. So, God, so happy that it turned out to be, on a relative basis, nothing. I'm sure that, you know, it's got some heavy discomfort. It's no fun to play with an ankle injury. But it's a lot better than Achilles. And it's obvious the impact that Hagen's has oh. on this team. I mean, he is the engine of yes. this team. Throws it. Alley-oop to Richards, who lays it in. They didn't back off. They got it to Nick Richards, and their lead goes to eight late. Well, this was a tremendous answer by Kentucky on the road. Tremendous answer by the Wildcats. This young team, and even though they've got sophomores, and Richards is a junior, and Sestina, a grad transfer, you know, they're young together and young in their roles. And they've taken some lumps this season with some losses, and they got beat by Ohio State. Yep. And lost to Evansville at home. But they, they, they've grown up a fair amount on this one. And usually they continue to grow up and peak in March, but you can certainly see what the potential for this Kentucky team is given the development of Richards and Quickly in particular, and obviously the arrival of Tyrese Maxey. Now look, this is not as powerful a team. It, it, this is nowhere near a team like John Calipari had in 2015. I mean, that was a, a juggernaut. But in this season, when there aren't super powerful teams up top, they've got a chance. So Stina got fouled. That's true. I mean, the competition at the top that they're playing against it's just not the same. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Georgia's got a lot to look forward to with this group. You know, coming off that, that terrific win at Memphis, you know, they're going to continue to get better. And it's, it's not just Anthony Edwards that should have people excited. Sustina so knocks it down. It doesn't get easy for Georgia. They have to go to Auburn on Saturday. Auburn Tau will join me for that one. Auburn's still unbeaten. They play their game tomorrow night. And they're impressive. Samir Dowdy is one of the best players in the country. And Javon McCormick is probably the most important player that Bruce Pearl has. See, when Edwards does that, and you know, it might be too little too late here, but when Edwards does that, it makes makes you say, hey, he's got to do that more because his, you know, he can always get a jumper and elevate over people. But he's got to put people in a bad spot where they can't guard him. And, and it, whether he's in the post or driving it uh, and driving off a ball reversal, uh, he's gonna, he can be unstoppable in that regard. You know, Calipari was talking about the development of Tyler Hero. And when he arrived, he was a great shooter and he left a great shooter. But his game became more evolved when he took the ball to the basket. 
Edwards is a really good shooter, but to your point, you take the ball to the basket, you just develop a, a larger part of your resume. Yeah, and and look, Tyler Hero is a he's a great shooter, and I wouldn't classify I wouldn't classify Anthony Edwards as a great shooter, but he can he can get he's streaky and he can hit shot after shot after shot. But with that body and that ability level, uh, there are guys that you know, guys just can't guard him. And as he continues to learn the game, and he will, uh, he's got an element to him that, that can be unstoppable. He's only 18. I mean, he, he should be still in high school. He re, he's one of those guys that reclassed. Kentucky after halftime, they were a different basketball team. Part of it was Nick Richards staying on the floor because he's such an impactful player this season. And man, they really did an excellent job in the second half on both ends of the floor. Their first road game of the season, their first win on the road this season, and the first time this season they've overcome a halftime deficit to win. They beat it by 20 last year, a little closer this year. Our final score, Kentucky 78, Georgia 69. For Jay Billis, Marty Smith, Scott Matthews in the truck. Mike Ireland, our director. I'm Carl Roberts. For our entire crew saying thanks for watching tonight, folks. Sports Center starts next.